Thank you. Um, so I'm not going to speak very much today at all, but um, I just wanted to give you an idea of sort of where we are with this and, uh, and why, I suppose. Um, and it's constantly interesting because don't forget, all of us are also educational supervisors. And um, so, you know, in the last couple of weeks, even, um, as well as looking at what we've written in terms of the curriculum, I've also been looking at it with trainees and also looking at it with people who are working towards CESA. So I feel a little bit like, um, let me just point out these swimming pictures aren't me. They could be, but they're not. Um, you'll understand that with the next slide. Um, so today is really about coming to the surface after we've been working on this in great detail for a very long time. And um, so for me, it's about now coming up for air and looking at what we've got, what more we need to do. So um, we are not going to be changing what is in the curriculum at this point, but we are still working on the guidance. And so one of the things that I want to get out of today is a, a bit more of a sense of what guidance we need, what more guidance we need, what format it should be in. So we've come up for air and we're now starting on the implementation phase. Next slide, please. This is why you can see it's not me. So um, why did we do this? Well, the GMC obviously has to keep up with medical education principles. And there. so this is about moving forward to make sure that we're on good, sure educational principle footing. But also the GMC has a real agenda about flexibility. So they're working, there's a lot more emphasis on the generic competences, which are basically the same for all trainees in all specialties. From our point of view, um, one of the things that we've recognized with our old curriculum was that trainees were spending a huge amount of time getting competences, ticking boxes, um, showing that they're maintaining competences. And I think we've realized that that isn't necessary and we can trust our trainees a lot more to know whether or not they're still able to do their clinical work. Um, so the move is towards outcomes rather than competencies. So if I could have the next slide please Kim. So there's a lot of writing on this which I'm not going to read out but um, I actually found this very helpful because not very long ago at all, in fact, somebody said to me, what is the difference between an outcome and a competency? And I thought, mm, I'm not entirely sure, really. So I thought I'd better look it up. And um, th this seemed helpful to me. So the competence is what we've done before is looked at medical practice, looked at the job that we do and break it down into individual competencies. So looking at outcomes is doing it the other way around or starting from the end. So it's looking at synthesizing all the different competencies that you need in order to do the job. And I think we go, once we've got our heads around this, I think we're going to find it a lot easier because if we watch somebody do a consultation and fit an IUD, we're not just looking at the fitting of the IUD. We're looking at the relationship between the doctor or the nurse and the patient. We're looking at how good the history is. We're looking at whether it's done in a safe environment. So this is now much more real, I think. Um, and so the assessment is more holistic and more intuitive. So it's going to feel like a change at the beginning, but actually it's going to make a lot more sense. And then the other word that I actually, I sort of, again, found a definition for, which is capability. And I just love this, actually. So the ability to integrate and apply multiple competencies, not just in the familiar setting, but novel, complex and changing circumstances. So if we could go back a slide, Kim, if we go back to this swimmer who sadly is not me, it struck me that his competencies are how high are his elbows? How strong is his kick? What's the position of his head? And when he's in training, he will think about those things all the time. But right now at this moment, he's not thinking about those things. He's completely outcome focused and he's just concentrating on getting to the end of that pool as quickly as possible. And that's the real situation. And I think if he started worrying about his elbows at this point, he would probably sink. Um, but then his capability, it seems to me, 
is if he fell off the side of a ship, would he be able to still swim like this and save himself and probably other people as well? So for me, that's the difference between competencies, outcomes and capabilities. Can we go on two slides now? That's it, let's get rid of her. Okay, so just briefly, um, I, I don't have to pretend to be enthusiastic about the new curriculum because I am actually incredibly enthusiastic and excited about the new curriculum. Um, and I think it is going to be better for all of us. So for trainees, I think there's going to be a real advantage in terms of not having, not having to demonstrate maintenance of competency. So I know some of you in years five and six are spending more time showing that you can still do things that you learned to do some years ago, almost than you are learning new things now. So that's going to be improved. The new e-portfolio, uh, sorry, I haven't finished that one yet. Um, the new e-portfolio is going to be better largely because it's been developed with trainee input. Um, and the whole thing is going to be much more flexible than it was before. And so in terms of what you learn when, you, we've still got the basic intermediate and um, year six phases, although they might be called different things, but it is going to be much more flexible than it has been before. But the important thing, as Charlotte said, is the clinical content is not significantly different. So you're going to be doing the same training but we're describing it and evidencing it differently. Next slide, please. So this is Charlotte with her trainees. Um, so for trainers, there is a change to the way we think about assessment, but I think you're going to find it much more intuitive, much more holistic and global assessment is going to really make sense because I think you'll find that it's what we do anyway. It's just that we've got a different way of documenting it. We've done a lot of work on the assessment tools, so they will be more fit for purpose and more useful. And there will be plenty of guidance about how we use the new curriculum. So um, what do you need to read? Well, you've probably read all of this over and over again. Um, so the definitive document will continue to evolve, but that is the document that should tell us everything about the training program. Um, and it is available on the website and will continue to be. The knowledge requirements and syllabus is about what you need to know, what you're going to be assessed on, and that's going to perform part of the exam syllabus. Um, and you'll hear more about that today. And you need to read the guidance, but you also need to contribute to the guidance because we know that our trainees particularly have a really strong history of supporting each other. And I know that you will continue to do that. So next slide, please. Kim, you still there? Okay. Um, so I don't know if you can see my next slide. I can't, but um, here we go. Sorry, yes, that one. Um, so really, all, the main thing I wanted to do today was um, say thank you. So, oh dear, sadly, Kim's name is hidden underneath the thanks. So many people have contributed to this work up to now, and I know that many, many of you and many more are going to contribute going forward. Um, but to get us to this point where the GMC has approved our curriculum, I wanted to say very much thanks to Kim, um, who's been our project manager, and also Vinette, who was the project manager at the beginning, who started the work. Um, for those of you that don't know Kim, she is extraordinary and has really pulled this together and made it happen. Thank you to Mitesh and to Fran from the faculty who have done a huge amount of work and are incredibly patient with us all. Joe, who takes the lead at the top as our director of education. And then everybody else at FSRH, so many people have helped with the comms, with the website, with organizing events like today. Um, and then we've got the dream team of Catherine on assessment, on uh, curriculum, Charlotte, who is SAC chair, Tracy, who has done all of these things. She has um, been curriculum lead, she's been vice president specialty, and uh, she very kindly agreed to stay on when she stopped being vice president specialty to help us with this work. And then Indu, Gillian, and the whole of the exams committee who have done a huge amount of work in terms of pulling in the work on the assessment and the exams 
actually quite late on in the process. So they had to do that in a very condensed way. Tony Belfield, I'm sure most of you know, who speaks on behalf of patients and the public, um, it has been brilliant all the way through at grounding us, reminding us and um, injecting a lot of common sense into the process. I think it's safe to say. And then all of you, all of our trainees and trainers who have come to workshops, sat on committees, filled in questionnaires, sometimes at very short notice, and given us thoughts and ideas. So it really has been um, a piece of work done by a large number of people, and we really appreciate that. Um, and we're only coming up to where we haven't finished. Um, so on to the implementation phase. So thank you very much. <laughs>